will do the rest. Yep. And I strongly believe in that. Um, and that's like I said, a, a good word. And I do have to ask you about your 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 school. The the um the school. So so you bring in new barbers and cosmetologists and you are just training them um on your product or you're training them just to be successful in, you know, whatever uh, path they choose, whether it be cosmetology or barbering. Uh, D, all of the above. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so at the Face Shop AIT training facility, and the AIT stands for Advanced Industry Training, uh, what we do is we take licensed barbers and cosmetologists, and we bring them in, and, and we help them in the areas of which they need, you know, business, marketing, branding, uh, coloring, fading, uh, razor work, all of those different things. So we have different classes. But one of the things that I would like to, to share with the, 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 the barbers and stylists that's, that's maybe listening is uh, we have to start retailing. We have to start retailing. You have to have to look at the products that you're using, and if those products are being bought at your local Walmart, beauty supplies, then you refer those products to those customers, and they go to those different places, uh, you're not getting a referral check. They're not sending you any money. So you need to start working with professional products, products that you can retail with the customers, because what you have to understand is at the end of the day, the customer trusts you. The customer can be a stranger on the street. The customer can be someone who's patronized you for years. They trust you, and they trust your words. And if they have a problem with their hair or their skin, they're going to ask you, what do I need to use for this hair? And if you say, hey, go to the beauty supply store and get this or go to Sally's and get that, they're going to go exactly where you tell them to go. And I want you to wait for that check in the mail. It's probably not going to come. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so so do you um do you have different training classes like throughout the year for them, or is this like just ongoing like all all the time that you do your class? Well, we have different training classes. We actually have our next class coming up the I think it's January the tenth and the eleventh. And what this is is this is an edu- educator's training class for the Eddie's product line. But in this class, we will be teaching you color techniques, fading techniques, uh, razor work, uh, how, how, to, how to prevent in front of the audience. Uh, we will teach you product knowledge of the Eddie's Hand Scare Care product line because if you want to go back to your prospective cities or areas or whatever it is and be a representative or a brand ambassador for the product, this is a way for you to make money. This is a way for you to build your clientele because one of the things you have to understand is if a customer trusts you, they won't go to anybody else but you. That's that's a true statement. Um, I I can recall. Uh, I I have locks, but you know I have one little area like on the one side that I I always get it cut down. Really, I get it faded out on one side. And so I walked into a barber shop here recently, and the, the name of this barber shop is um what was it? The original uh, Barber and Kings or something like that. Um, so I go in, and I'm looking at the way they look. Like, I'm just looking at them, right? I'm I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting. First of all, when I went in, nobody said anything, right? Um, so I sat there for a few minutes, um, and the guy, he was, kept twisting, turning the guy around in the chair. And just kept turning. I was like, he don't know what he's doing. And then um, the older guy in the back, oh, I'm about to leave. I got to go to a funeral. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then somebody else was like, well, I can come get you in a few minutes. I'm going to go over here and give me something to eat. And I was like, see, that's, that's improper training, bad customer service. Um, the guy that was spinning the guy around in chair, looked like he took a shower one day. I was like, what do I do? <laughs> you know what I mean? So wow. just bad customer customer service. And, and I've, I've come and come to, and it's quite a few barbershops here in where I stay in Pensacola. 
which is like a Pensacola, Florida is like a retirement town almost. Um, but uh, it, it was just disappointing to see that just improper training and stuff like that. So, well, that, right. that is this is this is what's going on right now, and it's 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 sad. We're facing a pandemic in in, in the barbershops, especially our African American run barbershops. We're facing a a, a, a pandemic. And that right. pandemic is professionalism. You know, uh, there's a, 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 a rapid virus that's going out of unprofessionalism. And what it's doing is it's causing us to lose momentum in in our industry. Uh, because when I look at this industry alone as far as the barbering, you know, when you, you, you think about it, the masses, you had the black barbershop and you had the white barbershop, right? But in the white barbershop, they would they was putting their kids through college, and they were telling their kids, you know, I don't want you to to be a barber like me. I want you to go get go get your, your law degree. I want you to become a doctor. I want you to be a, a professor, a teacher, whatever the case may be. So they were sending their kids to school. Well, when those guys died out, you know, those kids had no interest in the barbershop. Well, on the other side of town, in the African-American community, you know, back in the days, the barbers were were, were well-respected. They were right. they was professional. They, they was everything that a barber is supposed to be, a counselor, a father, a brother, a friend, you know, a, a confidant. All of those different things is, is what uh, the, the 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 barber was in the African American community. Well, what happened was uh, the old guys started getting old, and I'm gonna say eighty five, eighty six. There was a drug that came to all major cities across the United States of America, and that drug was called crack cocaine. And what that drug did was it destroyed our community. It's just what little bit of leadership we did have in those communities. So once again, you got the black barbershop, you got the white barbershop. Well, the white guys died off, their kids went to school. Well, so now fast forwarding things, the barbershop in the black community is a hangout. And what those white guys did was they got on the golf course playing golf and they said, hey, I really miss the barbershop. I, I miss how we used to go to the barbershop and and Mr. John used to cut our hair. So they said, you know, we need to come up with something like that. And that's where all your franchises have come to, come, come into play. And those franchises, these are people who, who don't even touch Clippers, don't know anything about Clippers. And they're making millions of dollars of, a year. The, the men's hair grooming industry is a billion-dollar industry, a billion-dollar industry, right? Right. You say, what percentage of the African American community own that uh, uh, that billion dollars? I don't even think we have one percent of it. Why? Because we are not running our businesses like a business. Just like you said, you went into that business and no one spoke to you. If you went into a white business, there was going to be someone at the front desk and say. Hello, how you doing? Welcome. What can we help you with today? That's what and you have that's to drive my Right. So when you go into when you come into the fade shop, the first thing we want to say when you hit that door is welcome to the fade shop. And it really throws people off because they like, did they just really speak to me? So like, yeah, welcome to the fade shop. How can we help you today? Yeah, I want to get a haircut. Okay, cool. Just sign in, we'll be right with you, sir. And the communication with the customer it's, it's, it's what makes them feel comfortable. But I've been in shops where, like you said, they're looking at you like, what you doing here? Or they almost like trapping outside the barbershop, like they trying to sell you some some, some or a, a, a car or something. You know, before you get up here, what's up, what's up, what's up, you need to, you need to cut. You know, and then it's like there's no consistency in the prices. 
you know, how much you cut? Oh, I mean, uh, I mean, I can cut you for five. You lowballing everybody on the inside of the shop trying to get a customer. But I mean, it, it's so it's sad. So when you start talking about the money that we're losing because of our unprofessionalism, it's 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 probably half of that 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 uh, billion. It's at least five hundred million. We're we're losing because, like I said, these guys who don't own a license, don't cut hair, don't know anything about cutting hair, they're making two and three thousand, two and three million dollars a year running these franchises. And right, and that's are, like, is that like the um, what what do you call them? The the the, the shop? Uh, what is it? Sam's? I, yeah, I know she like little sports, sports clips, super cut. Fantastic, right. Sam, great, all of that stuff. Yeah, they're 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 Floyd's. They're 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 making all kind of money. They're they're making all kind of money. And what we have to realize is we're losing people who look like us to them because what's going on is they're 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 coming to to the schools to learn how to cut all kinds of hair. I've heard Barbara say, "I don't cut straight hair." I don't cut kids here. What do you mean? What are you talking about? You a barber? You supposed to cut all hair? We you supposed doing? to cut all hair? That's right. That is absolutely right. And I know one barber shop I went into. Uh, apparently, the guy had had that shop had been there for like twenty or thirty years or something. And so when I talked to his daughter, who was cutting hair in there, she said both of her brothers. We're doing something else. They they weren't interested in in cutting hair at all. Kind of like what you were just talking about. And watching her cut hair, I wanted to say, girl, you need to. You should have went to law school. Or, but cutting hair is not, you know, your your thing. Or or maybe she just didn't um, have somebody to push her and, and help her and 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 do the right thing. And and also. Uh, kind of unprofessional. I wish somebody would just give classes on like customer service and and all that kind of stuff when you're going to these establishments. Because sometimes even if your your skill is not that great, customer service will still keep people coming back. Um, and and you can you can work on your craft, but that customer service is just so important. Um, oh, oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. The, the 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 best barber isn't the one who cut the best hair. It's right. the one who 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 who's, who's consistent. You know, yeah. but at the end of the day, it, you don't really need a class because it, treat people like you want to be treated. If you go somewhere and you're trying to buy something or you're trying to get a service and they don't speak to you, the first thing you're going to do is complain. And I went over there, they didn't even speak to me, man. Okay, cool. When they come to your job and you don't speak to them, you see how you felt? Well, that's how they feel. Treat people like you want to be treated. Exactly right. That's exactly right. But we need more. We need more. Um professionals out there like you because like you said it's it's um I think in that that prof- and, and you know what I had I had another uh I had another guy on he he also um is a barber and I I would I sometimes post his, his work on on my Facebook page but when I see how he like he posts other stuff um and just his some of his other uh videos are not the most professional, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. he kind of throws me off. Even, even though his craft is amazing, like great barber, but I'm like, but is he representing his brand the way he should be representing a brand? You know what I mean? Right. Well, what I like, what I always like to say is, be who, be who you say you are. Be who you say you are. If you say you're a professional, look like a professional. Act like a because this is what I always uh, try to try to you know give an example of. If you go to the doctor, right, and the doctor say open your mouth and you look at his fingertips and they they black as all out doors, you gonna be like hey, hey, hey hold on what, what are you doing? Or well, if he coming in there and he smelling like some some of that good good that Iraqi stuff. Or or his pants sagging. You you're gonna second guess 
his professionalism. That's right. So 